Recently at Tech Yes City, we took a look at the RX 9060 XT 16GB and the value proposition, I just thought it was a real mediocre card. But you guys in the comment section said, look Brian, this is one of the only cards that you can actually buy. Same with the 5060 Ti 16GB. Though when it comes to talking about value, we have to look at those gaming results. And here's where we'll start off with Dune Awakening. This game was just launched yesterday. I decided to throw it into the mix here. And here's what we see at 1080p. We're gonna show you guys side by side, just the comparisons here. You can see what's going on in real time. The RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte, as well as the RX 9060 XT 16 gigabyte. They're performing very similar in this game. This is the Teddy B max settings, by the way. But then if we go to 1440p, the 5060 Ti does do a little better. And same with 4K, if we're at least looking at the percentage terms. However, moving on to another newly released title, this is Splitgate 2, and this is actually free to play. You can download this today, jump on, and it's actually a lot of fun. However, I did find it a lot more smoother on the 9060 XT. And this was while we're playing some online matches, I decided to play at all these three different resolutions here, but at 1080p in particular, the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte was struggling. I was getting a much smoother experience on the 9060 XT. However, when we stepped it up to 1440p, the results then started to normalize on both these cards and then going to 4K. The 5060 Ti did start to pull ahead by quite a substantial margin, but I believe that is mainly due to the fact that the 5060 Ti carries the GDDR7 VRAM as opposed to the 9060 XT, which carries a GDDR6 VRAM. However, that aside, let's keep looking at these titles and then look at ultimately the value proposition right after today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Sightful and their immersive desktop software. You can couple this with the Air 2 Ultra VR glasses and then turn that extra monitor that's usually static on those glasses into a whole new augmented reality world. And the best thing is it's only going to cost an extra $200 on top of the glasses. Links below to find out more. Though throwing in a bit of a curveball here with these gaming results, we got here Elder Ring Night Rain, a newly released title as well. And here is where at 1080p and 1440p, we just got pretty much identical results. And unfortunately the game is capped, at least from what I'm testing here, 60 FPS. But when we go to 4K maximum settings, that is when we get a 45 average versus a 59. Not that you're going to exactly need high FPS in this game with of course that 60 FPS cap. Though moving on to Marvel Rivals, here is where if you're getting into your competitive online shooters, but you like to spice things up with higher settings, We've got here a pretty clear victory for the 5060 Ti, especially at 1080p, where I did incur some stuttering on the flip side versus, say, Splitgate. We did get some stuttering on the 9060 XT at 1080p. Though going to 1440p, the results are pretty similar to 1080p in terms of the differential there. They're going to 4K, a little bit of a flip here, much like flipping a burger on a dirty surface. We've got here the RX 9060 XT pulling ahead with those 0.1% lows, so the 5060 Ti decided to do a bit of a stuttering session at Marvel Rivals at 4K. But here's where we're moving on to Fortnite, and I feel like this game, it recently brought out this update that's made things a lot smoother, which is surprising because I'm just used to an absolute stutter fest in Fortnite. But here's where on both cards, I didn't really incur any stuttering. And in fact, the results were very similar between these two cards. You'd be hard pressed to notice a big difference here. Only really when you get to 4K do you start to see the 5060 Ti pull a bit more ahead, but at 1440p and also 1080p, they're very close together. It is at epic settings, so you can dial things down to high or even medium or low, and you're gonna get actually a really smooth experience on Fortnite if you are playing this competitively online. The next title here is Final Fantasy 16, and here is where I haven't seen anything like this yet. This is where the 5060 Ti does slightly better at 1080p, getting 85 versus 84 average FPS. And then if we go to 1440p, the 9060 XT then wins. But then if we go back to 4K, the 5060 Ti then wins again. So it's kind of like you've got a bit of a roller coaster here in terms of the results and who's winning at what resolution. But this exact roller coaster effect that we're seeing in Final Fantasy does play into the pricing which we'll talk about a little bit later. Let's get on with these results. Next up here, Kingdom Come Delivery 2. 
And this is where we've got 109 average FPS versus 124. So 5060 Ti is pulling a bit ahead at 1080p. Then at 1440p, it's a similar story. And then moving on to 4K yet again, a similar story, especially in terms of percentages there. Though onto Rift Breaker, this is where this game likes to incorporate a little bit of ray tracing, especially at max DX12 settings. But here is where we've got at 1080p, 220 average FPS versus 264. But then as we go to 1440p, the difference does start to drop down a little bit. Though going up to 1440p, this is where the 9060 XT does claw back a little bit of performance, especially if we look at the performance differential there in percentage terms. And then onto 4K, it's a pretty similar story to 1440p. The last game we got up here is Cyberpunk 2077. And here's where I'm just testing out in the open with all the light. You'll notice this time around, we're testing in the daytime because we're gonna be testing some ray tracing after this title on the rasterization performance. And at 1080p, we've got 128 average FPS versus 144. Then at 1440p, 96 versus 88 and then at 4K 51 versus 46. Now here's where I decided to do a couple of tests here. We're gonna get the ray tracing results done first, where if we look at Cyberpunk in particular, at 1080p, if we turn on ray tracing, even just with like some of the sliders, not everything, and then just medium settings, we've got here a drop off of 46% on the 9060 XT. And we're just gonna pull up the visuals for you guys. Do you honestly think this is worth a 46% drop in your performance? For me personally, I've just noticed with ray tracing in general, something I'm gonna talk about a little bit more, I just find myself not turning it on in any of the games that I'm playing just because I'm not really getting value in terms of the absolute tanking of my FPS versus the visual fidelity that ray tracing adds on. If there's any titles out there that you guys think are a must for ray tracing, I'd love to hear them in the comments. But when I'm looking at, say for instance, this example of Cyberpunk here, I'm just getting absolute tanking in my FPS, nearly half the FPS for something that is really not making me enjoy the game any more than I would with it turned off. Though, if we move over now to the 5060 Ti, it's very similar in terms of the tanking of the FPS percentages there, 144, then down to 75. If we go over to another title, we've got Dragon Age, and we're testing this, we're going from 96 average FPS all the way down to 70, so it's not as big as a drop off, 27%, but then if we go over to the Nvidia side, it's 98 versus 77. So it's not dropping off as hard as it is on the 9060 XT. So I think this is where Nvidia holds that ray tracing advantage in that when you turn on the ray tracing settings, things aren't dropping as much as they would with the 9060 XT, but that gap is closing. However, the last title we're pulling up here, Black Myth, really showcases how bad ray tracing can be in terms of tanking your FPS. We lost 80% of our FPS going from 74 down to 15 at 1080p on Black Myth doing this benchmark here. And you, again, I'll pull up the slides just like Cyberpunk 2077, and you guys can tell me if you think you'd wanna turn this setting on and go from 74 to 15 average FPS. Though on the Nvidia side of things, we go from 78 average FPS down to 33. So the Nvidia cards are either equipped to deal with ray tracing a little bit better or a lot better, depending on the game you choose. Best case scenario for AMD would have been Cyberpunk in terms of versus the 5060 Ti. But then if we go over to Black Myth, that's kind of the worst case scenario there where the 5060 Ti is doing about double the FPS in ray tracing that the 9060 XT can do. The ray tracing is better on the 5060 Ti, there's no sugar coating that, as well as the other augmented features like DLSS. This is something that is pretty important to talk about because it could be a deciding factor whether you want to get one card over the other. And I will say, for instance, in a game like Cyberpunk, DLSS, the, especially the latest update, the Transformer model, it's known as the K update, this does make the picture look gorgeous whilst giving you extra FPS if you wanna use this upscaling method. And it does look better in my opinion than FSR 3 does in this title. As well as if we look at a title like Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, the Transformer model is really doing some hard lifting here. So overall with the Transformer model with DLSS, you can actually manually override this and use this in a lot of different titles and it is going to look pretty good. And even though FSR 3 and FSR 4 are pretty good, I feel like they need to, AMD needs to roll it out more aggressively and get these into more games, especially FSR 4, because when I tested that, it does work pretty well. It's just that it's nowhere to be seen in a lot of these popular titles coming out. 
Though another thing is the multi-frame generation, if this is a selling point for you, the 5060 Ti does have the 3X and 4X mode, but me personally, I just don't really rate frame generation that much. I can pull up some benchmarks, charts from the previous video we did with multi-frame generation and, and even then FSR 3.1 frame gen. And then this comes down to, do you wanna get higher frame rates via MFG having already a high base frame rate or do you wanna lower your settings to get a higher frame rate? I'd actually prefer the latter when it comes to multi-frame generation. Your mileage may vary, but I just found over time, I play a lot of these competitive multiplayer titles and frame generation is a no-go for me when I'm playing competitively. However, let's go on to the final talking point here, and that is the power consumption between these two GPUs. And this is where the 5060 Ti overall, when I looked at all the games when I was testing, whether it's a 1080p, 1440p or 4K, the power consumption was lower on the 5060 Ti, making it a more efficient graphics card. However, I feel like the 9060 XT isn't AMD's best offering in terms of efficiency. The 9070 would definitely do a better job of that. But if you want to undervolt or overclock these cards, here is where you're going to get, I feel, a much better result on both these GPUs when you undervolt. And for instance, in June Awakening, this recently released title, I decided to undervolt the 9060 XT and we got basically the same FPS as we did on default settings, except we dropped the power consumption considerably. And then if we wanted to overclock, we really didn't get a whole lot more, but we just got more power consumption. And actually the same is to be said for the 5060 Ti, but it's very interesting, especially in June Awakening at 1080p. Here's where we got the power consumption down to a mere 76, 77 watts max power draw and still getting very similar FPS numbers to the default settings. But then if we overclocked, we really only gained like two average FPS and we're using even a little bit more power than we were on default settings. So undervolting, especially for the NVIDIA card, and especially if you wanna play 1080p on a lot of these titles, feels like some part of the GPU isn't getting utilized enough at 1080p, and so that's allowing it to drop the power consumption just down that much more. I mean, 77 watts for this kind of FPS at 1080p, that's very impressive, to the point where I'd love to see a card with no PCIe 8 pin connector on it, just running from PCIe power, come out from NVIDIA. So I think they could do that. But of course, whether they care enough or not. Anyhow guys, with all those numbers out of the way, it's time to give you guys a straight up conclusion with both these GPUs. And if you're thinking about which one should I get, I'm, it's a hard press decision for me. I know the RX 9060 XT 16 gigabyte, it's cheaper. And if we look at the MSRPs, it's 350 USD versus the 430 USD on the 5060 Ti. That's an $80 difference. It's quite substantial at these price margins. However, what we're looking at here and what I've noticed was when I checked the pricing, we've got in some countries a big gap. For instance, where I'm from in Australia, there is actually a massive gap between the cheapest 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte I can find and the cheapest RX 9060 XT 16 gigabyte I can find. In fact, it's around $160. But then if I go over to the US at this point in time, there's 390 USD so it's $40 over MSRP at this point in time for a 9060 XT in, in America. And then if I look at the 5060 Ti, that's coming in at $430, right on that MSRP. So I think in terms of picking one over the other, I would first of all, just look where you live in the world, look at what is the cheapest option, especially one that's coming at or around that MSRP. And then I'd pick that option, especially if the other option is coming well above that MSRP. But if both of them are coming in around their MSRP, then it comes down to, are you going to be using the upscaling technology a lot? If so, 5060 Ti is probably gonna be the better choice. Or are you just raw gaming? And in fact, are you just playing a few titles competitively online? If you are, you may wish to look at those particular titles, the FPS difference between these two cards and see which one is gonna do a better job for you. Because I feel like if you're just raw gaming, you're gonna be better suited with the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte. But if you do find yourself saying wanting to lower settings and you come into some cheap higher resolution monitors and really want to utilize upscaling, then the 5060 Ti is probably going to be a better choice. Though, just like my previous video, I'm going to say this again, I'm not in particular really happy with either of these cards and what they bring to the market. I feel like in both cases from AMD and NVIDIA, we could have got a little bit more either with lower prices on MSRPs 
or just more beefed up specs. I would have loved to have seen the 5060 Ti, more or less a cut down 5070, and same with the 9060 XT. I would have loved to have seen that be a 192 bit bus card and say be somewhere in between where it is now and where the RX 9070 is. So not entirely happy with the value proposition put forward by AMD or Nvidia here. However, I hear you guys, they're pretty much the only two cards available at these lower price points where you are right now. And so we've done the direct comparison here today. The numbers are there. Ultimately, I'd start with the pricing where you live first and then move from there. If they come in at very similar prices to their MSRPs, then that comes down to do you need the extra fluff that the 5060 Ti offers? And if so, is it gonna benefit you? And that's really what it comes down to. Other than that, I'd definitely take a look at the used market because there's some really good options there too, just like we found in our recent used PC parts hunt of the month. And with that aside, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.